the pottery wheel for about a week and um, I, I started to record the unboxing of the wheel and just a short presentation at the beginning and after a week of using it I wanted to make a short review and say what I like, what I don't like Actually, there is not much things that I don't like. I'm very glad that I made the decision to buy the larger uh, plate because I find it very comfortable to put my hands and to relax my arms. I think if it would have been smaller, it would have been really uh, first difficult to center uh, because you have to level the, the wheel before you use it. And the larger the plate, the larger it's, it, is easier, it is easier to have different points of verification to level the plate. And uh, so the larger, I'm very happy I made this decision because it's very comfortable. Uh, the speed of the wheel also is uh, very, I mean the maximum is just the max, probably the maximum that clay can take. Um, and uh, with the aluminum plate, it is, um, uh, it's, it, it's easy to clean, easy to maintenance. And uh, there is no holes for the bats. Uh, but I have pins for the bats, so at any time, uh, if I want to eventually use the holes, I can do that. So far, I'm trying to manage with that. And I saw a technique on a Japanese website and um, where they use a traditional bats with some kind of leather. And I think before I make any holes, I will probably try to um, make my own bats um, to have a good adherence and uh, to be able to work on large pieces and still not have those holes because um, the thing when you make holes for example for a 14 inches uh, wheel uh, a bat you will the, the, the space between the holes won't be the same for a smaller bat so at some point you find that you would have to make several holes for different bats and still since my space is small anyway I would not be able to so yeah we were interrupted again so yeah so we were interrupted again um, so yes, my space is very small, so um, I would not be able to have like 20 large bats because I made the pins, uh, the pin holes for like 12 inches or 40 inches bats. And I don't want also to make uh, plenty of holes on my, uh, on my plate. So I will try to find another solution to use uh, more traditional bats, such um, Japanese bats. And um, so, uh, so I'm happy actually that there is no holes. I'm not bothered with that. And uh, the uh, um, uh, structure of the wheel is made of steel. It's a welded steel with a paint. I don't know how um, tough will be the, the paint or solid it will uh, last. Uh, as there is a, a small chip in an, in a play, in an area, but uh, I believe that if I maintain it, clean it very often, and um, um, if I see a chip, for example, put some rust remover and some paint uh, uh, for metals, it shall last for a very long time. The engine seems to not be tired at all, even if I push, even if I put weight. Um, it, 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 it does not slow down the speed so it is not I don't even hear the engine like uh, struggling to push them so I think the engine is strong enough and um, there are three feet on the on the pottery wheel so it's kind of easy to level it uh, and uh, find the stability of the wheel also there is uh, the basin it keeps the water so for example if you work with one color of clay you don't have to clean it all the time you just finish your work with your clay make as much pot as you need as long as you need 
uh, the, the basin is still very close and my plan actually, my, my, my plan is not to clean the basin every day uh, because I would lose too much materials. My plan is to, as long as I use one color of clay, one kind of clay, I leave the basin on and I'm going to wet it and at the end I am going to recollect the, um, uh, the scraps that I'm making to uh, reuse it, recycle it. And so uh, at least this clay is not lost, does not finish in the sink. It is, it is going to be reused either as a slip, either as a clay. And um, uh, what else? The plate also. So you have the basin that collects the water and behind it you have a lot of space like on the on this place I have a tray where I put um, my uh, pins, uh, my tools, the, at least the most, the tools that I use the most. I have a small bucket for the water to clean the tray and only to clean the tray and I have another bucket, a small bucket for the water that I use to build my pottery. So I, I could have like um, two tray, two, uh, one tray and two little basins for the water and so it's big enough to be very comfortable so I have in, around me I have all kind of other stuff where um, I have basins where I clean my hands and I recollect the water I have another basin where I put my dirty tools so also I recollect the dry clay and um, but um, I think that for the kind of space I have the wheel is small enough uh, to be so I can turn around and uh, be able to be comfortable in my space and still so it's it's I, I set it up in one area in front of the air conditioner it's not going to move it's going to stay here and um, it's very comfortable I can vacuum all around I can clean all around and I still have a lot of space and the plate still is very very comfortable so the price I paid, uh, I believe it's a good deal. I did not take the extension of warranty. Maybe I should have. I think I still have some time, like a few days, uh, to think about it. I might take an extension of warranty. I don't know, because the extension of warranty is about $40. And for the price of the wheel, I'm not sure if that's worth it. Um, from using tools in carpentry, uh, when I just moved in the United States, in France I had, um, in France I had uh, very expensive tools, all kind of most uh, expensive tools you could find, because I was working with guild carpenters. I had a wood construction company. All my employees were guild carpenters, marine carpenters, people who had like um, a strong background, and um, I, I wanted them to feel uh, the respect of uh, the, the new company I was making and I bought, I, I bought expensive tools and I, was, I, I practiced on those expensive tools. And when I arrived in the United States, my first job as a carpenter was to work for a movie company. And the only thing they gave me, uh, so they had um, a shed and uh, with all the tools inside, a container, it was not a shed, it was a container. They had this container, which was a mess, and uh, inside the container all kind of tools but they were all uh, Ryobi tools and the first time I had to use a saw, a Ryobi saw, I found it very insulting to be able to downgrade my level to that kind of tool. So it took me a while to adapt and the more I've been working with Ryobi tools the more uh, I, I, I think that when you have the skills uh, you can work with anything, any kind of tools. And that's something I learned from Italy. My first job in uh, uh, when I was in the School of Architecture was in Italy. And my boss, when I just arrived, told me, listen, if you are an architect, you, have an archi you are an architect everywhere. Whatever the kind of tools you, you have, if you have a table, if you have the um, rotary um, pen, you don't need that to be an architect. The, to be an architect is in your mind. And if your mind is set to be an architect, you're going to be an architect everywhere. 
And I think that with carpentry, it's very much the same. So if you have the mindset to be a carpenter, you're going to be a carpenter everywhere, whatever the kind of tools you have. And so it took me a while to adapt to Ryobi because um, uh, the squares are not squares. Uh, the, um, I mean, um, the blades is not straight. It's always a little bit uh, makes a curve. And uh, so you, you find all kind of, um, of difficulties with a cheap tool that you don't have with expensive tools. But learning to adapt to that and to work with that also, um, um, I think, helped me to develop more skills and to better um, master the, the technology that I was using. And I think that um, uh, after that, when I bought my tools for working at the carpenter, um, I, I've been buying cheap tools. It's not that I would not uh, spend money to buy expensive tools. It's just that I found out that working in the marina, in the conditions we have on the boat, I was burning a lot of engines. And if I would have burned the engine of a, a very expensive tool, I would have been sorry for that. While uh, using cheap tools from um, Home Depot, from uh, Arbor Freight, I could burn an engine and uh, charge it to my customer. So that was uh, simple. It was okay, my engine is burned, so buy another one. And so I would take extensions of warranty and uh, use my tools. And then um, if I needed really to uh, change it because the engine did not last that much, I was able to do it. Here it's a cheap uh, pottery wheel. Um, um, the average price for a real pottery wheel is about 1,000, 1,500, sometimes two or three thousand. Can be very expensive. There are probably a reason, and I see that on, on when I watch YouTube videos, like the steel is stronger maybe. The pottery wheel is larger, like the plate for working is larger. The engine is probably more solid and more uh, reliable. Uh, the paint also might be more uh, uh, lasting longer to sustain the water and eventually the rust. So there are, there are some few reasons why a pottery wheel should be expensive, but still uh, $1,000 to $3,000 is a lot of money, especially when you're a beginner. And uh, when you're a beginner, you don't really know where you're going. Like you can enjoy it for six months, and after six months, you you kind of you you're kind of stuck, and your inspiration does not come, and you 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 find yourself more comfortable doing something else, such I don't know, building by hand. And um, so uh, I think that for starting, a cheap wheel is just fine. And, um, and this one is especially, it's, it's really good. I mean, uh, it's stable, it's solid. Uh, you can put a lot of weight and a lot of pressure on the plate. It's going to take it. The engine does not get tired or slow. And so far I'm very happy. And uh, so the only questions I might have is, do I take an extension of warranty or not? Uh, tell me what you think in the commenters and uh, thank you for watching and I put all the links in the description so you can find the pottery wheel I will, I will put the links also for the tools that I, I bought to be able to start my small workshop and if you want to learn more about my setup, uh, how I, um, I organize my working area, please go on Patreon. All my Patreons have uh, access to more descriptions of my studio. Um, I, I, I make videos to explain how I work, uh, the kind of space I have to show more of the inside of my home. And, um, and but this is restricted to patreons so uh, thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and don't forget the thumbs up please share with all your community and your friends so i can um, um, I, um, my uh, visibility will increase with youtube and see you soon for the next video bye bye
here, as you can see, and the wheel is plain aluminum. It's very solid, very thick. Uh, here I have the pedal, which is made of plastic. Seems uh, kind of robust. A large pedal. This is plain plastic also. This is very solid. And it's, it's, uh, it's thermoform, we can see. And uh, it's, uh, it's strong. something that's kind of a good uh, thing so far I'm surprised this is metal it sounds very steady and uh, ready to go for the beginning of a workshop I just plugged it, so let's see uh, how it works, how much noise it makes. Oops. Thank you. 